Um, do you guys have any final thoughts or advice that you would like to actually give to the audience before we disconnect? Um, we can start with you, Brian. Sure. I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity. I want to thank my other panelists. This was like a really uh, great panel. I learned a lot just hearing from everybody. I was taking pretty good notes, just like I saw Thea taking good notes too. Um, I would just say on the funding side um, is definitely look at all the options you have. Look at kind of what you have first. Can you make that work? If you can't make that work, then kind of what else is available that makes sense based on your business, based on your industry, based on your location. Um, and then I would say kind of a non-funding recommendation is we are going to reopen. We will reopen. I know that we're not reopened right now, but what I'm encouraging businesses to do, particularly in the food sector, is to really think through the health and safety strategy that they have and those plans that they have in place because the most important marketing thing that you can um, take advantage of is to protect your customers, protect your employees, protect yourself because COVID-19 is highly contagious. It's really, um, you know, getting around. And I say it's like the roach report effect. Basically for business owners, if you're that one business that didn't take proper cautions, you didn't have gloves and masks and shields or whatever else you need to do, um, you're gonna be that business that's probably gonna have some COVID-19 cases. It's gonna get in the newspaper, it's gonna get in the community. Um, and so we're encouraging folks to take the steps and don't reopen the business until you've taken proper steps to protect it. And now it also comes back to funding because you need to factor in what you're using for the funding to be able to put that towards any of these kind of things that you're going to need to reopen the business, whether that's PPE, whether that's shields, you know, like scotch, you know, tape on the floor to guide customers to go one way. Um, but definitely take advantage of all the funding that's available and then re think through your strategy on reopening and make sure that you're going to um, be in the best situation because you don't want to let that genie out of the bottle where you reopen and you're not safe. Thank you. Althea? Yeah, I, I, I think for me, the, the one thing I would really like, um, which is essentially what Brian said, is to really develop a strategy for going forward. And, um, you know, before COVID, we were having a swing in the economy and things were great. And when things are great, we tend to be a little bit lax about uh, certain things. Um, and COVID is reminding us that that's not the way to go. So um, I would say, you know, really invest in a strategy for going forward. Is it easy? No. Does it take time? Yes. Does it take focus and concentration? Yes. And, you know, in our fast paced uh, society, uh, it's hard to slow down and do what I'm talking about. But on the other hand, you know, there's COVID out there and you're you know, told to stay home. So stay home, you know, reach out to Brian and his team or SCORE or the Women's Business Develop uh, Women's Business Centers and really do the hard work of developing that strategy. What if you do get that idle loan that you're hoping to get? What exactly are you going to do with it to maximize your recovery? I mean, I love a, a lot of what Ariel said and, you know, she's just so smart. And I just think that, you know, you need to take a page out of her book uh, when you talk about developing a strategy for scaling and moving forward. This is the time to look for waste in your business and get rid of it and uh, look for the opportunities and maximize them. So just do the hard work. I say uh, right now you have the time, you can't go anywhere. Um, and, uh, and I think that if you, if you will invest in that strategy, it will pay dividends, not only in the short term, but even in the long run as well. All right, thank you. And then Ariel, do you have any final tips? Um, honestly, this has been super awesome. Uh, it's been a pleasure just sharing uh, all of this conversation uh, just amongst the panelists, but also you know, with you all in the audience. Um, I think that right now there are a lot of um, there's a lot of uncertainty, right, in, in the air, and um, it's really easy to get overwhelmed as a business owner in terms of like, okay, it looks like I have, you know, EDL as an option or PPP, or I don't know what to do, and then there are all these private, you know, options as well, and like, how do we actually navigate that? And so right now is the time for you to actually take the time to study 
um, to know what are the actual requirements of each different type of capital that you want to go after. And that's everything from, you know, recognizing that, yes, you know, EDL and PPP have been a little bit more lenient when it comes to things like personal credit scores and credit history, et cetera. But when you go back into that private sector, you know, even for some government backed ones, like, you know, the SBA 7A, et cetera, there's certain credit scores and things that they want to see. And so I think it's really important that you actually take a look at where are you in terms of financial health, both um, personally as well as in the business. You know, if you need to invest in having a consultation, you know, with an accountant or someone who's a financial professional, actually do that. And then based off of that, when you kind of are clear where you actually are, then you can take the time to start to educate yourself about all the different options that are available to you. And so between um, the resources that are available um, in the 100K Incubator app, also, you know, on the SBA's, you know, website, SBDC, um, and then I know FIU is going to be coming out with some really amazing resources for you all as well. Like, use the time when you're at home to study and it's going to make you a much better business owner and CEO for the long term because you're going to have all this new knowledge that will not only benefit you during COVID, but also benefit you just for the long term. All right. Awesome. Thank you, you guys.